The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Experiencing heaven after hell was something else entirely. Unsure of how to deal with redeemed demons, you and your boss, Serpentius, had spent weeks, months in the Senate building, not allowed to leave. This was a new precedent, and very tightly kept under wraps. Understandably, however, you couldn't be kept here forever, even though the Seraphim would have preferred that. Not even the exterminators, who had failed in their attempt at permanently killing you and your boss, knew of your redemption. Especially since you were redeemed during their defeat. <sighs> this truly was an embarrassment. No one wanted to be brought to the public. Meanwhile, though, Emily, the apprentice Seraphim, such a good soul, came every day into the holding cell area. Ironically, it in itself was akin to a four-star hotel room. Super soft beds, perhaps a little too soft, a TV, beautiful view from the window, and three all-you-can-eat meals per day. This was prison in heaven? You'd never want to leave. Though, you were kept separate from Serpentius. Of course, but you conversed in Morse code via tapping on the walls. Quite a strange experience using Morse code during more sensual activities. Though if his knocks were any indication, he actually really enjoyed doing it like this. You meanwhile couldn't wait to feel his claws around you any longer. It was maddening. How you could miss someone's touch after such a short period, after all. It was maddening how you could miss someone's touch after such a short period already. After all, you had lived your entire life not even knowing his human self. Not to mention, he had been dead by the time you had been born. But then finally, finally came the day of your release. To avoid unnecessary harm coming to you and Serpentius, thanks to your appearance. Sure, you had different bodies now, but the exterminators most definitely would be able to tell who you were. You were given a designation. While you were a doll angel and Serpentius a serpent angel, you were handed golden masks that covered the upper halves of your faces with a keyhole-shaped hole at the center, through which your own nose just barely fit, while Serpentius, well, he didn't have a nose, really. You were so-called locked angels, hiding your demonic identities. And any demon in the future would be redeemed, would be given the same designation. No matter what kind of divine creature they became in heaven. Branded as nomadic angels, no divine virtue was given to either of you, allowing you and Tim to go wherever you wanted. Well, this new freedom, and all you had to do was wear a keyhole mask for a couple of decades... Uh, that was a small price to pay. That day, when you left the Senate building with the gentle weight of the mask on your face, seeing your boss sit beside the golden water fountain was just the thing you needed to forget the last couple of months instantly. Sir Pentius was playing with a Rubik's Cube as you approached him. Hey, boss, you purred loudly as you approached him, and he looked up carelessly throwing the cube behind himself. It splashed into the water, immediately sinking to the bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me. Both of you shuddered. Serpentius had splashed a different angel who had been sitting on a nearby bench. He was holding the Rubik's Cube up with a very grumpy expression. 
uh, uh, you can keep it, he said quickly. The angel's gaze lowered to the Rubik's cube in thought. Quick, run! Sir Pentius shouted. Both of you broke out into a quick sprint. No, it's yours. I would feel uncomfortable. Take... The angel looked up from the cube. Ingrid from... Hello? What just happened? Out of breath, the two of you found yourselves deep within the central city of heaven. Where your... World turned upside down. You were overwhelmed. You had never seen something like this before. Holy shit. How much do you think this is worth? Boss, it's a city made from gold. Of all the money in the world, you could not afford this. From your holding cells, all you saw from heaven was a vast sea of clouds, as well as the Senate Building's plaza. Sure, there was already a lot of gold, but this was a little tacky. He snickered. <laughs> I can see why they were scared of us seeing this. <laughs> oh boy, I think it really is an angel like that we are thinking the same thing. You answered him. And then both of you started giggling while holding each other's hands. As you and him were both imagining the amount of destruction Sir Pentius's blimp could cause here. Though, considering what Adam did to it, it probably wouldn't be a long rampage. Just then, he inhaled. <sighs> but where do I get the blimp? You placed a finger on his chest. <laughs> uh, don't speak it. Don't plan it. This is basically our first day. Just make a good impression, all right? He didn't respond. He just blushed while looking at your finger. Rolling your eyes, you gave him a quick peck on the forehead. Behave yourself, boss, all right? You purred. Yes, Miss Poppy! He saluted you with an excited expression and then snickered. You took his hand in yours. Well, boss, lead the way, you purred. He raised a finger with excitement on his lips. Eat, he shouted. Uh, eat, you tilted your head. He scratched over the key-shaped nose hole of his golden mask. I, I want to eat. I'm not hungry, but... He turned his head, looking at a cafe where angels were sitting together eating cake. My sweet tooth is aching. Money was an interesting thing in heaven. Money was the root of all evil, but it was a convenient way to keep someone's desires at bay. And so, the way money worked up here was childhood-like, with pocket money. A certain amount of it was given to an angel at the start of each day. Total work, but could be increased by attaining work. Since money had no true value, it uh, was just a way for someone to restrain oneself. Items were infinitely available, after all, and had a static price. It never increased, but never lowered. Everyone got the same amount and could not be transferred. It was kind of like a video game or what a college student thought communism was like. But thank God most of those went to hell by default. Sitting down on a relatively faraway table from the others, a cherub soon took your orders. Sir Pantius tapped his finger on the table as you waited. He looked around and then leaned forward with a smile. So, I know this is heaven, but why do I still feel like there is going to be a drive-by happening at any moment? You blushed and looked behind yourself. Thankfully, no one had heard that. You raised a finger and shook your head. Opentius tilted his. Huh? Not so loud. Remember what Sarah said. No mention of H E double L. Hell! That means hell! shouted the chipper voice of the cherub. It was holding two plates with a cake on them. It was holding two plates with slices of cake on them. 
A few eyes stared towards the three of you, but uh, thankfully, not enough eyes to make it awkward. The chair placed the plates on the table. Why in heaven would you talk about this? It's such a dreary place. Still, it smiled, which meant this wasn't supposed to be an accusation. Still, all your neck hairs were standing up. You glanced at Sir Pentius, whose lips were wiggling. Clearly he wanted to say something, but wasn't sure what exactly. Swallowing your pride, your memories of hell, your own feelings towards the subject, and you quickly answered, Well, we are just theorizing how the punishments on the layers kind of work. You know, is it like Dante's Inferno? Is it like the Bible? It, it's just simple human curiosity is all. Please believe it, please believe it, please believe it, you thought. Ah, you too, said an angel sudden from another table. We have been talking about it too, haven't we, Agatha? Well, this is a curious subject, but who am I to judge? Whee! The chirp flapped around, flying to a different table to collect the used plates. I want to shoot myself, grumbled Sir Pentius. He shoved his fork into the strawberry shortcake he had ordered. You mouthed the words, me too. But why? Thank God that other angel couple on the other table coincidentally was talking about exactly this. Otherwise, this could have ended awkwardly. Sarah had made it clear if you and your boss ever wanted to leave Central, no talk about hell, no bragging about who used to be demons, no stupid... I'm special shit. She was very clear about that. You think they suspect something? You're right, I twitched with agitation. To give yourself a moment, you shoved a piece of your own buttercream chocolate cake into your throat. And goddammit, it tasted incredible. In fact, it tasted so good you almost cried. Almost. You swallowed your bite as slowly as possible, both to savor it, as well as to give you more time to think. You then inhaled through your mouth, and then your eyes met those of Serpentius. Suspect what? We are just two nomads enjoying cake, and what we talked about was accidentally shouted out by a cherub. Well, yeah. Except that... Your glance was enough to make him not finish that sentence. Instead, Sir Pentress just sighed. Uh, what did Emily say? Nomads live anywhere in the tents, right? Something like that? You nodded. Yes, we live in tents as nomads. Uh, they work on some magical heaven crap anyway, so they're bigger on the inside, as well as have electricity and internet and... All that fun. How about we do that next, huh? Will be something to do at least. <sighs> Fine. As long as we don't talk about... You stopped yourself, and you smirked. Narrowing your eyes, you muttered very quietly, Go fuck yourself. It was hours later and you stood before your erect tent. You had found an empty cloud ocean far from central. Of course, the city could still be seen. It appeared as if, no matter how far you traveled, the main skyscrapers would always be visible, probably not to get lost. Nomad tents had sprinkled the close outskirt of central. This location was so far, however, you could only barely make out the silhouette of your neighbor's tent, quite far towards the western horizon. These tents were actually very comfortable to carry, as if it was alive and could feel the intentions of its owner. I want to carry you, so I became a little cylinder-shaped bag with a strap. I want to be set up? Okay. I just grow into it intended shape, like a bouncy castle. You had your boss's... Of course, you had your boss choose the tent for you. It was black with orange specks. 
He said it reminded him of his own snakehood. Though considering its angelic one was white, he understood the true meaning of what he meant. But it was when you entered when your jaw truly dropped. It looked mind-blowing. It was a large, round room with a vaguely ten-shaped ceiling. A spiral stairwell in the middle that led to the bathrooms. A big, round bed stood on the left side, with a home cinema set up on the other side. Placing both hands on your head, you stepped outside, comparing the outside to the inside. The thing looked like not even two people could fit in it comfortably, but when you went in... It was one of the most beautiful apartments you had ever seen. Better than the hotel, better than the holding cell, heck, it was better than your personal quarters on your boss's blimp. Even Serpentius was taken away. He had sat down on a very, very comfy looking sofa, made out of red satin, golden colored wood. He was breathing heavily through his mouth out of sheer amazement, trying to take in what he was seeing. Uh, remind me, did this cost again? Like how much? He managed to mumble eventually. Like thirty heaven bucks? I still have three hundred left. A defeated silence soon entered the room. Your mouth felt dry. I think I just made the realization that this is heaven. You approached your boss with your hands folded over your tummy. Yeah, me too. You sat down next to him and smiled. But then, why do I feel so melancholic? You didn't answer. Well, you had a theory, but you didn't want him to hear it. You just wanted to enjoy... To slow down, maybe breathe a little. You then both had the same thought and took hold of your golden masks simultaneously as you removed them. After all, this was your private quarter. No harm in taking the stuff off now. <laughs> For a moment you were surprised, feeling the coolness of the tent brush over the slightly moist, sweaty skin on your forehead. You then place your head on his shoulder, staring at the carpeted floor. God, this place was tacky. Like a Persian lounge. I wonder how this works, you mumbled. Hmm? There's nothing to worry about here. No strife, no pain. How long do you think this will entertain us? He snorted quietly. Well, I see it like this. He jumped up, causing you to frown. We are starting you here. I certainly have plans. No explosions. I certainly have uh, at least one plan. He shoved his body onto your lap, taking hold of your hands, his big eyes looking right into yours. One of them is marrying you. You inhale through your mouth. N not yet, of course. I don't even have a ring. Yeah, he stuttered. You averted his gaze, but smiled. <laughs> Charlie would kill us if we didn't invite her. Your boss chuckled darkly. To the marriage, I mean. I mean, how would we? Hmm... He didn't expect your little hum. Were you seriously thinking about this? He just wanted to make a little... I, I just wanted to make a joke. You smirked, quickly pecking his forehead. <sighs> Serpentris could be so adorable. He exhaled with a little grunt, and then you narrowed your eyes flirtatiously, smirking, pulling the snake into you. Well, I didn't laugh... You purred while pushing into your boss until he softly thudded onto the pillows. You're pinning him down, his teeth flashing into a bright smile. <laughs> oh, Poppy, 
He purred excitedly, and finally you kissed him for real. Your tongue pushing into his mouth as quickly as you could. His hands rubbed over your arched back. No thanks to his more round and soft angel body, his nails no longer scraped over your cloth. He made a noise somewhere between a grunt and a confused hum. And then you popped off his mouth. Something wrong? No. You tilted your head and smiled. <laughs> well, can't tear this off anymore, can you? Why don't I help you, boss? You purred. Leaning back, you pulled at the golden cord of your toga, dropping it to the side, before opening the golden clip on your shoulder, causing the entire dress to practically fall apart, revealing your unclothed body to him. Oh, God. You bit his... You bit your lower lip, but after a quiet snort, you giggled. <laughs> Don't take the Lord's name in vain. You couldn't stay serious as you said that. Honestly, you wanted to sound jokingly stern. And then you both broke out into violent laughter. <laughs> but how can I not? Your body is heavenly. <laughs> His gentle claws placed in your chest suddenly, and you have to pleased. He took the right opportunity. He rubbed gentle circles into your supple flesh. While your body may appear like that of a doll, it really was more like your arms and legs that had joints. Your skin, as plastically as it looked, felt soft and was warm to the touch, and he absolutely loved it. You huffed, biting your own thumb before purring. <sighs> I wonder if it would be sacrilege if I pecked you tonight. Well, it wouldn't be heaven if it were now, would it? He replied, cocky. We sacrificed so much to be here, after all. His eyes narrowed deviously. Get that strap on out, Poppy. That's an order from your boss. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling Stuarts, HuskyHD17, Bella Mare, MysticJade111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.